This is Tadia Rice with Womanosity for women with curiosity like you, me, and every woman I know. I am so excited to bring to Woman Radio today one of my guests who is so exceptional and unusual. And I know you are going to not only learn a lot, you're going to be amused, you're going to enjoy, you may or may not agree, I don't know, but just listen Listen with patience, and you will be very surprised at what you hear. You'll be glad you did. Welcome, welcome to my guest, Dr. Jale Boyd Phillips, a graduate of Clark Atlanta University, the University of Southern California, and with a PhD in social justice. Jale also studied contemporary slavery at the Wilberforce Institute for the Study of Slavery and Emancipation. That work, along with everything else she has done, has led her to a very holistic method of healing our bodies as women, as people. She has helped governments, NGOs, so many organizations across the globe in detecting and understanding human trafficking, which is modern slavery. Jale is also a medium and can communicate with our ancestors and, believe it or not, the organs in our bodies and how we build the tools that are afforded to us by ancestral intelligence is here for our use so that we can live fully within our purpose, release ourselves from the bondage of others' expectations and be able to embrace our unique and divine reason for being on earth. Dr. Jale Boyd Phillips helps people unify the self, integrating aspects of self that have been separated from our core. And that's why I'm sharing what Dr. Jale Boyd Phillips has taught me. We'll talk about the anatomy of trauma, its uses, and the ways we can identify it in our bodies and even in our Vaginas. Yes, and I'll say it again in our vaginas. I said it, I meant it, and I don't regret it. We're going to talk about our vaginas like I know you've never talked about it before. And you're going to learn how we can help heal our diseases that are physical, spiritual, energetic, emotional, and even intellectual. How many of you know what yoni steaming is? is. It's also called vaginal steaming. It's something I didn't know much about, but man, I'm going to learn now. So Jale, welcome, welcome to Womanosity. I am so glad to have you here. You are in Miami, Florida. I am in Hawaii, and here we are coast beyond coast with one another. It's so good to have you. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you for having me. So tell us more about Yoni Steaming, What is it? How does it help our vaginas? And how did you come about doing this work? (laughs) So yoni steaming really is just, just a wonderful ancient women's medicine. At its very most sort of basic, it is the practice of standing, sitting, or kneeling over a pot of hot water. Sometimes that water has herbs in it. Sometimes it doesn't. But it's just allowing the steam to sort of bathe your pelvic organs, including your vulva, your inner thighs, your uterus, your bladder, your intestines, like any of those uh, organs that are in the pelvic bowl. As the steam rises and sort of like warms up your pelvic area, then a lot of whatever toxins are in the tissues of those organs start to come out through sweat. It's almost like going to a sauna, but it's just for your pelvis. Are you saying our vagina sweats? If you have a vagina, you have probably known it to sweat at least once or twice. (laughs) I know mine does in dance class. My goodness, you know, I never thought about that. What brought you to this whole topic of vaginal health? Because it is really critically important for women. We don't talk about it. It's one of those taboo subjects. We don't share information about our vaginas because it's so it's it's socially awkward, not to mention socially discouraged. Absolutely. And I think I suffered for so long because of that reason. But now 
through sort of yoni steaming and finding a community among women who really want to learn more about it, I'm finding that we all really deal with just a couple of the same issues. <laughs> and once we realize that, we all can really share information and help each other. So I personally came to it when I was living in South Korea because it's something that's practiced there very openly and very commonly. And I wanted to try it out because I have historically just had really terrible periods. I had my first period at the age of nine and my periods have always been from nine until, I don't know, maybe my mid thirties, they were always 10 days long and they came about every 21 days. So I was always on my period, recovering from my period or like fearfully preparing for my period. They were characterized by extreme fatigue, migraines, bloating, cramping from my ribs to the soles of my feet, flood bleeding, enormous clots, nausea and vomiting, mind fog. I would get lost going from the bedroom to the bathroom. I have no idea where I was. It was just really disorienting. And I really just wasn't getting any help. My mom had had similar periods when she was young and just felt bad for me and made me soup, but really didn't have any knowledge of what to do for me. Doctors, of course, just gave me the options to either plug it and drug it or get on birth control or have a hysterectomy, none of which felt like they were viable options for me. Those were certainly <laughs> unnatural alternatives. I don't think women always appreciate what one another goes through with periods. Your particular situation is probably more common than many realize. Men don't get it at all because, of course, they can't. But for other women, you know, some women go through life, no problem. They can pop out babies. They go into menopause with no problem. And periods are not an issue. However, I don't know any of those women. Every woman I know has had difficulty with their periods. You started at nine. I think I started at 12. I don't even remember, but I know it was miserable. And I was miserable. And here we are, miserable. Our entire physical systems are being so taxed. And we're trotting ourselves off to high school or grade school, in your case, trying to fake it till we make it, acting like there's nothing wrong while we're in pain and suffering. Uh, I certainly can relate to what you are saying. I know that there's so many vaginal issues that women face from yeast infections, endometriosis. Uh, what are some of the other issues that yoni steaming help women with? Any of the seven maladies that can sort of cause issues in the pelvis and in the reproductive tract can be what? preventively addressed through yoni steaming, and I'll name those seven maladies. The first one is blood deficiency. You're not getting enough blood. Either you're not producing enough blood or it's not circulating properly to the pelvis. Is that, is that being anemic? Mm, it can show up as anemia, but it has lots of other presentations as well. Oh, tell me more. If your body's too hot or too cold, a lot of times it's because there's not enough of not just blood circulation, but the other uh, fluids in the body circulating. If you have any sort of machine, right, and the fluids aren't circulating, then all that friction of the constant movement that we're in causes heat to build up. And that's partly because what our machine does is it takes in things that are good and sends out things that are toxic. So if those toxic things are not leaving, then that, of course, causes the body to heat up. Do we not release toxins in we the blood flow of a period? We should, but if we're not producing enough blood to have a proper period, then those toxins stay in the uterine lining, don't they? Which brings me to the next malady, which is blood stagnation. If there's not enough blood moving through the womb and out the womb, then you can have months and months and months of buildup of blood, mucus, and toxins that are in the uterine lining. So one way you can know if you have blood stagnation is if at the end of your period, you see that the blood starts to turn brownish, that means you've already finished letting go of the blood that you were meant to for this month. And this is old blood from last month or the month before, or even before that, trying to come out so that your womb can finish cleansing itself. So what would you say to women who find that their periods appear brown? 
boil some water. You can put a little Himalayan salt in it if you like, or if you have some peppermint tea, you can put that in there if you like, or some roses or lavender, something just really nice that has a disinfecting quality. And I mean herbs, not anything with disinfecting qualities. Just put just a little bit in there and then you can stand over the pot with a long skirt or a sheet around you. You can kneel over the pot. Just make sure you put a towel around the pot so you don't accidentally burn your tender thighs on it. Or you can fashion a chair with a hole in the top and put the pot underneath it and sit over it. Oh my gosh. So roses, lavender, which grow in gardens, you can get lavender. What about spearmint? Any kind of mint is really great for disinfecting and clearing out toxins. And that includes sage is in the mint family, basil's in the mint family. Those are some good ones. Some other good disinfecting herbs include citrus peel. So after you finish peeling your orange, just set those skins aside, wash them and maybe even dry them out and keep them so you can steam with them. I like to use kumquat peels. Other disinfecting herbs include dong kwai or angelica root is fantastic for all things having to do with the feminine uh, reproductive system. Sophora root is brilliant at killing any sort of yeast or BV infection. Who, where would you find Sephora root? I like to get my herbs from a company called Mountain Maus. It's M-A-U-S, Mountain Maus. They have very high quality, very affordable herbs, and they have fantastic Sophora root. And it's spelled S-O-P-H-O-R-A. So what are the other maladies? There's also womb fatigue. And what this means is that if you don't allow yourself to rest when you're tired, which Women, we definitely rarely let ourselves rest when we're tired. A lot of that energy that we have allotted for the day for our voluntary muscles, we start to sap it away from the involuntary muscles, including the womb. If we're too tired to really do do anything, but we're like, just one more load of laundry or just let me just read one more chapter, then in order to do that one more thing, we're pulling a little bit of energy away from the womb. The womb, if she doesn't have all the energy that she's supposed to have, she can't hold herself up in her slightly contracted pose for the full 28 to 30 days that she's meant to. How do you rest your womb? By resting your entire body. Wow, that is a luxury, isn't it? It shouldn't be, right? It shouldn't be, but it is. Who has time, you know? Mm -hmm. Wow. Keep going. Keep going. So when you find yourself having what we call short cycles, cycles that are 27 days or or fewer, then that's when you need herbs that will support the womb and support the spleen and help it go to 28 to 30 days. I often steam with those kinds of herbs. Mugwort is great for that. Anything orange is great for that. Shizandra berry is wonderful. That and astragalus is wonderful for that. I've never heard of most of those. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Say those again. Shizandra berry. Shizandra berry. Mm -hmm. Never heard of it. Where do you even get it? Mountain mouse. (laughs) Oh, okay. Well, for those of us who are not in the United States, Mm -hmm. you would have to find it somewhere. It's readily available in Germany. I think that's where it's from, actually. So I feel like throughout Europe, you can get it. So spell it for our listeners, please. S C H I S A N D R A S C H I S A N D R A. Gisandra. What a beautiful name it is. And what were some of the other herbs you mentioned? Astragalus. A S T R A G A L U S. Where is that from? That is a Chinese herb. Okay. But it's. So common. Anywhere you can get ashwagandha, you can also buy astragalus. The two are usually ordered together. And, and Okay. So, you know. so I suppose Amazon is a good option. And so go ahead and look those up and see where you can get them. So you can then do a vaginal or a yoni steaming and help your body, help your entire pelvic region. Okay. There's more to this? Yes. So then the fourth malady is excess heat in the body when your body is too hot. It can throw off all of your functions. So cooling off the body is really important. This one becomes very important as we start to move 
into perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause because our kidneys start to produce fewer and fewer of the fluids that we're accustomed to having, including those fluids that keep our joints moisturized, including collagen, which can sometimes lead to wrinkles in the skin, including blood, including all of those wonderful fluids, bone marrow, which can then weaken the bones and lead to osteoporosis. So getting herbs that can really nourish the kidneys and nourish the liver will help to make sure that your liver is processing out the toxins as quickly and efficiently as possible, and that your kidneys are boosted to make enough of those fluids to keep you feeling young and fresh and restored, regardless of what age you actually are. So ladies, if you are perimenopausal or menopausal or postmenopausal, all of this is critically important. I had no idea that all of this was so interrelated. No doctor has ever said this. You know, you go to the doctor and you say, I'm in menopause. I'm, I have a furnace is going on inside of my body. What am I going to do? And they give you pills or they give a hormonal patch which isn't good for you. And we all know that now, and they've stopped giving it to many people. So yoni steaming needs to be much more in the forefront. Well, that's what this show is about, ladies. And we're going to learn more and more about yoni steaming, vaginal steaming, and why it is so important for us. It is not taboo, even though some people may think it is. We're going to continue talking about it. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be back with Dr. Jale Boyd. Phillips, amazing expert in vaginal healing. Oh, you're going to want to hear more.
This is Tadia Rice with Womanosity for Women with Curiosity. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Ni hao. I'm Steve Bergadine from China. You're listening to Womana Radio for well-organized men. I'm listening to... If you want to hear entertaining or exciting information, then Woman Radio is for you. From the creative to the provocative, intriguing to the challenging, it's great food for our ears. Women are building the world in unexpected ways, and Woman Radio is playing a major role. I'm Phoebe Kilby in Asheville, North Carolina, and I hope you're listening to Woman Radio 2. Yourself, and what would you say is your biggest achievement? We can hold that part until the rest if you want. Or we okay. can do 25 questions. Okay. I... Um, I mean, I can do either. I prepared for the 25, but I can cool. talk about those three things, you know. At any time, at any time. Yeah. So let's yeah. knock out the 25. Okay. Okay, so let me get my recording. So, right. welcome back to, what, welcome back to Womanosity for women with curiosity like you and me and my guest, Jale Boyd Phillips. Now, you mentioned four of the symptoms of why women need to vaginally steam. There are more. What are they? Yes. So the other three include excess damp in the body when there's a sort of hyperproduction of mucus. It causes the body to be too damp and that creates space for recurrent infections. So excess damp often leads to recurring BV, recurring yeast infections, and then also lots and lots of clots. Yeast infections are so common because, of course, if you're sexually active, it can be transmitted. Yeah, they can be. Once we start to understand mucus and its role in our health, then it's a lot easier to understand how keeping the mucus flowing, you know, not letting it get stuck and hard and stationary really helps to keep most bacteria in check, in balance, and not proliferating. So you're saying there's mucus in our vaginas, which, yeah, that's pretty clear. Mm -hmm. We want to thin the mucus, is that correct? Right. So whenever you're checking out the mucus that's coming out of your sinuses, right, it can be anything from runny and clear to a little bit thicker and maybe darker. It can run the gamut from clear to white to yellow to green to sometimes blood tinged, or it can sometimes be really, really hard and difficult to get out. And it's the same with our wombs. Our mucous membranes run from the top of the mountain all the way down to the base of the mountain, right? Anything that's coming out of the top, we can also see coming out of the bottom. And these are wonderful messages about what's happening inside of us. Also, when we're looking at the discharge coming from our vulvas, we can see it be clear and very runny, or we can see it being really thick and, you know, lots of different textures and colors. This reflects our internal health. Our vaginal condition reflects our internal health. Never thought about that. What about for older women when you dry out because the vagina dries as we age? What happens then when you're, there's no discharge? This is also a symptom of one of the maladies. Uh, one of the seven maladies is excess dry, when you're too dry. And this, it doesn't need to be that way just because you're of a certain age. If you're steaming with certain herbs that restore that moisture, not only to the vaginal tract, but also that feed those kidneys so that they can resume making all of those bodily fluids that we talked about before, all of those lubricants that we talked about before, then that issue of dryness goes away. Some herbs you can steam with that are great for that include sea moss, chrysanthemum, marshmallow leaf and marshmallow root, slippery elm bark, and then, of course, those things that feed the kidneys, so hibiscus, roses, strawberry leaf, chamomile, those, all of these things, nettles, all of these things make the kidneys really happy and make them just 
make all those lubricants and blood and collagens to cool you off and moisturize the body. On my website, I sell herbs for steaming and for sipping. And they're formulated already to address whatever needs you have. So you can get certified vaginal steam practitioner. So if you're interested in getting certified, you can go there and you can also buy supplies and herbs uh, through there. At jaleboydphillips.com. Well, that's for my herbs. If you want to become a practitioner as well, you can go to steamychick.com. Now you mentioned women who are hot all the time. No matter where they are, they're always hot. What about women like me who are always cold? We're just always cold. What's wrong with me, Dr. Phillips? So excess cold is another one of the seven maladies. And this really has to do with the body not circulating as it should, or, or the blood not circulating as it should. And not just blood, but also chi, right? Not circulating properly. Energy, chi as in energy, mm-hmm. C-H-I. Um, and the other fluids not circulating properly. So figuring out how to warm the body again by using warming herbs and also warming foods can help to solve this problem. So You, you can- mean food that's heated up? Yeah, nice, warm, soft, easily digestible foods are great for people that have excess cold in the body, but also foods that they themselves are warming, like cinnamon, right? When you eat it, it's warming, chilies, garlic, ginger, these are warming foods, but also shrimp is quite warming, lamb is quite warming. There are foods that have inherently qualities about them that warm you when you eat them. Just like there are foods that cool you when you eat them, like watermelon, cucumber, cool as a cucumber, right? Interesting. That's not just a saying. That's really how it works. I need to go find out a list of what's warm foods. Mm -hmm. And I've never really thought about warm and cold foods because it's not literally warm and cold foods out of the refrigerator or out of the oven all the time. How interesting. So in my case, what would I want to steam? What herbs would I want to steam? Now for you, Tadia, I would recommend steaming with roses, with lavender, with apple blossoms, and with a little tiny bit of cinnamon. Thank you, darling. Now for our listeners, we we haven't got there yet, but I want you to know that Jale just read my body. However many thousands and thousands of miles we are away from one another because she is an intuitive healer as well. And we're going to cover that in just a little bit. But first I want to ask you, where did Yoni steaming come from? You mentioned South Korea and that women there do it as a matter of practice. Where, where did this originate? This is my most favorite thing about Yoni steaming. It seems to have originated everywhere. Anywhere there's a woman, there is a woman steaming. (laughs) There is history of it in everywhere from Egypt to Mongolia to the native tribes of North America to Chile to South Africa to Sudan to Norway to Greece. All over the world, there's history. Italy, there's even a quite a tome of how to use uh, steaming from hundreds and hundreds of years ago. It's just, it's ancient women's wisdom. It's how we've healed ourselves for generations. And yet... It seems so new age, and yet it's ancient. And oh my goodness, we are just so uneducated, aren't we? Well, thank you so much for sharing that. Okay, so ladies, vaginal steaming, go to Jale's website, jaleboydphillips.com, Z-H-A-L-E-H. She is all over the internet when it comes to this. And this leads me to my next question to you. Did Yoni steaming have anything to do with your intuitive healing work? Because that is so fascinating to me, what you are doing about intuitive healing and healing trauma, which we all have experienced. Yes, I 
started offering Yoni steaming as a service maybe in 2017 or 2018. And I was just doing it because it was helping me so much. So I was just helping friends and family and having them come over and, and have a steam or two, you know. But as I started taking on more and more clients and word started to spread, I discovered that when I was sort of having the intake with these new clients and asking them, you know, to, to share with me what was their experience, I noticed that I could see and hear their organs talking to me. I might ask the question, are you experiencing night sweats? And with their mouths, they might say yes or no, or sometimes, but their kidneys might be saying, yeah, she has them, she has them. Were you always intuitive as a child? Did you, you know, did you kind of have this psychic ability, this otherworldly third eye kind of observations or at least information coming to you and you didn't know where it came from? I did as a child, but it's only cute to have imaginary friends up until a certain age. And then it becomes very hard to make real friends if you're talking to imaginary friends all the time. So I sort of very consciously shut down that ability. And then it came knocking back. In Interesting. You are a PhD in sociology, your academic background. I mean, you're very grounded. So when, when I heard you were doing Yoni steaming and intuitive healing work, it was like, wait, what, wait a minute. Jale is an academic. How is she going, you know, 180 degrees this other way? But it really isn't, is it? It really isn't. I have always had a thirst for knowledge, right? And I have the kind of brain that allowed me to excel in the way that school systems are set up in North America, you know? So because I had that privilege, it was very easy for me to go quite far in academia, but I rarely found my questions fully answered, regardless of how much studying I was doing. Um, it really is academic in inquiry that led me to these other things, that led me to Yoni Steaming. There must be a solution for what I'm dealing with, right? Indeed. So how did the process of intuitively uh, healing with Yoni uh, help you begin healing trauma or seeing the difference between ancestral trauma and experiential trauma, because our societies have all had trauma, especially South Africa, the United States, Asia. I mean, where hasn't there been trauma and genocide and colonization? I mean, Hawaii to South Africa, it doesn't matter, opposite ends of the globe. Uh, what is the difference and the process with ancestral, tra ancestral trauma and experiential trauma? As I was doing Yoni steaming and I started realizing that I could talk to people's organs and they were showing me that not all of their illnesses or imbalances were caused by a physical problem. They were sometimes caused by an emotional trauma or an intellectual trauma, a belief system that was going against their very existence. And once I started to listen more closely to what these organs were telling me. And I started to understand what they needed in order to become rebalanced. Then my yoni steaming practice was not just, here's the pot, here's a cloak, go sit and steam. It was, okay, let's talk about this misunderstanding you have of your own power. Let's talk about this fear you have of becoming yourself. And those things finally allowed those organs to release the traumas that were sort of caged up inside of them and to function as they were supposed to function. And in that way, disease is relieved. The next thing that started happening was it wasn't just organs talking to me. It was their emotional body, their intellectual body, their spiritual body, which we often call the soul in this culture would show up and talk to me, their ancestors might step forward and say, hey, that is not a physical malady there. That is a memory from my life that is sitting inside of that womb or that's sitting inside of that liver. You're an expert in 
human trafficking, slavery and emancipation, you've come over to this other area as an intuitive healer and ancestral trauma. Can you tell us a little bit more about ancestral trauma? Because it so affects my communities in Hawaii, uh, my community in South Africa, your community in North America with African Americans and with Native Americans. This is really important because some people still don't understand that there is memory, there is generational memory from trauma. When we are choosing to come to this physical realm and we're deciding what our mission in this physical realm will be, there is a space where we gather with all of the ancestors who laid the groundwork for the mission that you or I or any of the listeners decided to take up when they came here. And in that meeting, those ancestors are blood ancestors, but also our mission ancestors. We all sit down and they decide in order to complete what you want to go there and do here, you need this of my experience when I was there, this mathematical computation abil ability, this ability to see color in places there are no color, this ability to understand animal behavior, this ability to create delicious meals, right? Like whatever skills uh, they think that you or I will need, they gift to us from their own experiences. And we carry those as DNA. We carry those memories that are just manifested into physical form as DNA. And we carry those in our own bodies. And while we're here, we stumble upon those abilities whenever it's time for us to use them. And, you know, when we're children, grownups will tell us, oh, you have, you're gifted at the ability to do this or that, or you have a propensity for musical instruments. It's because it has to do with our mission and what we came here to do. And sometimes those abilities have two sides of the same coin. Sometimes they're an enormous talent and sometimes they come with enormous trauma. And once we've gotten to the point where we no longer need that memory, we're left only with the trauma. So how does one get over trauma? This is really wonderful work. I enjoy it so much. When I find that there is a trauma inside, living inside someone's body, I make contact with it and I say, hey, who do you belong to? Do you belong to, the, to my client? Or do you belong to someone in their ancestry? And then they show me I'm his or hers, you know, or theirs, or they point to an ancestor and they're like, I'm actually his over there. And I call that ancestor forward and I say, does this belong to you? And they'll say, yes, it's mine. I gave it to them because I wanted them to use it for this, this or that. Sometimes that reason is appropriate and sometimes that reason is inappropriate. When it's inappropriate, I'm like, okay, it's time for you to take it back. And I ask if they have something to carry in and I transfer it back to them and then they can go forward and heal their own trauma because as long as they're not carrying their own trauma, they can't heal from it. So it's a win-win for everyone. If that trauma is still serving the client, if that trauma is still protecting the client in some way, giving them a healthy fear of certain situations or giving them sometimes even a phobia of something that is really bad for them, that they have no experiential reason to be afraid of, then I'm not permitted to remove it. My guides say, no, that is still helping the client. That client needs it. Leave it for now. Sometimes they'll even say, once they reach this certain age, it'll be time to release it. And if they release it on their own, great. And if they don't, it will show up in this type of presentation. So watch, if you reach age 46, and you're starting to have high blood pressure, come back and talk to me. Or if you reach, re, reach age 23 and you're starting to have vision problems, come back and talk to me. That is so fascinating. This is really spiritual work. It is a gift you have apparently been given by the ancestors to whom I greatly believe in and always have. So 
I, I, I'm almost dumbfounded. I don't even know what to say at this point. This is amazing. You have really combined the academic with mysticism, with intuition, with incredible intelligence and the learning. So you are a woman of curiosity. That's what this show is about. Listeners, ladies and gentlemen, I, I hope you are enjoying this. This is clearly a very critically important issue. Vaginal steaming, yoni steaming, whatever you want to call it. Who knew that this could have such an impact on our organs, on our mental state, on our emotional condition, on our entire holistic outlook on life. And we all have ancestral trauma. I don't care who you are or where you are, whether you were the victim or whether you victimized, whether you were the enslaver or the enslaved. Everyone has the traumas. That's why our world is such a mess today. So in our effort to try and unmessy the world, and bring healing and peace. This is very important. I'm going to vaginally steam. Ladies, I hope you will all begin to vaginally steam now so we can contribute to the betterment of our world through it. Who would have thunk? I didn't even think I'd ever be talking about this. My goodness. Okay, healing trauma, injury and disease, physically, spiritually, energy-wise, emotionally, intellectually. This is what Jale Boyd Phillips is all about, bringing us into balance and doing what, Jale? You call it unifying the self by reintegrating aspects of all the things that have been separated from our core. Is that correct? Yes. I think that one of the things that happens when we suffer trauma is that there are aspects of our unified self that become fragmented and even scattered, and we forget our full and complete selves. And that leads to all manner of insecurity, self-doubt, refusal to trust the self. And in, in many societies these days, this is something that is meant to divide and conquer, not all, only dividing you from your community and conquering, but dividing you from yourself and conquering you from the inside out. Recovering all these wonderful facets of you and bringing them back together, reintegrating them so that you can be your full, wonderful, magical self is really the work that I love to do. Thank you. Oh, Jale, thank you so much. I'm ever so grateful for this. Your work has had a true, deep impact on me, and I'm sure there are listeners out there who also have. So remember, everybody, you can send me your comments, suggestions, or questions for Jale even at info at womanr.co.za to Woman Radio. Contact me. Let me know what you think about this. And let Dr. Jale Boyd Phillips know what you think about vaginal steaming. What wonderful information you have shared, Jale. We're going to have to take a bit of a break right now, but I do want to play one of your favorite songs called Andromeda by Kelsey Bolkin. Tell us a little bit about it. Kelsey is a dear friend of mine and a fantastic musician. And she wrote this song that really is an anthem for me to remember. I know who I am. I am not going to let injustice slide. And I'll do whatever it takes to bring truth and justice to light. Good wow. healing. Should know it's time to 
Womanosity is like a good cup of coffee with a new friend, somebody I'd never have a chance to meet. Sometimes it's a new idea or thinking about an old one in a new way. It's girlfriends. It's Tadia, and it's all good. This is American artist, writer, and girlfriend, Jenny Cooley, in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Aloha, I'm Maya Sutoro from Honolulu, Hawaii, and you are listening to Woman Radio. I'm listening to... Welcome back to Womanosity for women with curiosity like you and me and my oh-so-remarkable guest, Jale Boyd Phillips. She is so amazing. I know you have enjoyed what she's had to say about so many important things. I know you have enjoyed what she's had to say about so many important things. Now we're going to have a little bit of fun. So, Jale, I have 25 questions for you. It's a speed round in five minutes. I expect you to answer all of these questions. Of course, I'll give you, mm, let's say, two uh, passes. So, if you really find you can't answer something, say pass. But answer as best as you can. Are you ready? I'm ready. Bang! Okay, the stopwatch has started. Okay, what color or flavor is your favorite M&M? Green. Oh, okay. Are you a cat person or a dog person? Both. Oh, really? Okay. Would you rather eat chocolate or watch your favorite TV show? I love a great story, so favorite TV show for sure. Do you have one you want to tell us about? Um, these days, my husband and I are watching Time Watchers. It's hilarious. I'm sorry, Time Wasters. It's hilarious. Time, are you a time waster? Uh, I'm sure in some way I, or another I am. <laughs> <laughs> in what city have you always dreamed of traveling? Oh, Lalibela in Ethiopia. Aha. Are you a morning or night person? Night person. <laughs> what words do you live by? I am. What's one vice you wish you could give up? Mm, um, procrastination. Oh, yeah, don't we all? What's the best compliment you've ever received? Um, I'm so glad you were born. How beautiful that is. When are you most inspired? Right after I finish laughing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Food, sweet or savory? Savory. What makes you smile the most? Seeing people in their purpose. What's the one thing people don't know about you, Chalet? I'm from Kansas City. I didn't know that. <laughs> okay, heels, flats, or sneakers? Sneakers. What's inspiring you in life right now? My own success. What's the most adventurous thing you've ever done in your life? Marriage. Oh, wow. That is an adventure, isn't it? How would you define yourself in three words? Joyful, lover, creator. Lovely. Diamonds or pearls? Pearls. What's something you notice about someone when you first meet them? Their aura. What's the one talent you wish you had? I wish I could sing. What's your favorite color? Gold. Nice. Gold is a very good color, hey? What color clothing do you wear most? Blue. What's the cutest thing on planet Earth? Mm, um, children playing together. What's the best thing that's happened to you this year? Ah, uh, spending a month on the big island. Of Hawaii? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. It is magical, is it not? So magical. Mm. What is your favorite song and why? St. Beauty's Stone Mountain. It always reminds me of who I am. So the song is about um, not being discouraged by the climb. Even though the climb is hard, the best way to go is up. Woo! 
Very nice. Oh, my goodness. We're going to take a listen to Stone Mountain by Saint Beauty. But don't forget, folks, the way you can reach Jalet by Instagram is at Doc, D-O-C, Zhaja, Z-H-A, Z-H-A. Her website, and please, I encourage you to go, jaleboydphillips.com. Let me spell that for you. It's a beautiful name, but a lot of people don't know how to spell it. Jale, Z-H-A-L-E-H-B-O-Y-D-P-H-I-L-L-I-P-S, all one word, dot com. Jale Boyd Phillips. Okay, Dr. Jale Boyd Phillips, we are going to spin this song now. Stone Mountain by Saint Beauty. Folks, enjoy this so much.
Dr. Jalet, Boyd, Phillips, I can't even thank you enough, my dear. As we say in Hawaii, mahalo nui loa. Thank you so very much for being with me today. I'm going to bring you back. I am going to bring you back. We'll have vaginal steaming part two <laughs> in the future. Thank you, Jale. I would love that. I'd love to come back again and maybe talk about some of the birth work I'm doing. Oh, my goodness. I didn't even know about that. Okay, part two will be birth work, ladies. Oh, Jale, thank you, my dear. Thank you. Bye now from Womanosity for women with curiosity like you, me, and my remarkable guest, Dr. Jale Boyd Phillips. I'll be back again next week. Don't miss the next episode of Womanosity for Women with Curiosity on Woman Radio, broadcasting 24-7 and globally into your ears. This is Tadia Rice, your host for Womanosity for Women with Curiosity. I am so proud to be a part of Woman Radio that broadcasts 24-7 around the beautiful world we live in. Please listen to my show every Saturday night from 9 to 10 p.m. South Africa time and let me know what you think. Email me at woman.r at co dot za. That's woman.r at C-O dot Z-A for you Americans. I'm so happy to bring you guests who have made history, are making history, and who will make history. Be my guest every week. Let's live, laugh, and learn on Womanosity for Women with Curiosity, broadcasting on Woman Radio.